It is one of the most iconic pieces in horror. When you see it, you know exactly who it belongs to. It's extremely unique and terrifying. Heather Langenkamp thinks it's one of the scariest things she's ever seen, and Robert England says, quote, It's a fabulous prop, and one that extends Freddy. It extends his anger, his revenge. I like that. End quote. Of course, I'm talking about Freddy's iconic glove. In the last Freddy FYI episode, I guess I could call it that, I delved into how Freddy's sweater came to be red and green, and a fellow fan wanted to know more about the glove. I'll be telling you about that today, the first glove, and how that glove was created. A lot of what you're going to be hearing is coming from Never Sleep Again, the documentary, as well as the book by Tommy Hudson. So, how did Freddy's iconic glove come to be? Well, when Wes was thinking about what weapon to give Fred Krueger, he knew that a lot of killers already had one type of blade. They had a knife or a machete or an axe, something of that nature. He wanted something different. So he asked himself what the most primal weapon was for humankind. What was it? Well, it was, in fact, the claws of an animal. So he decided to run with it. He wanted it to be dirty and yet shiny, but the directions weren't exactly clear. They were just kind of there and it was interesting. So when it came time to design this glove, um, Jim Doyle gave the information to Lou Carlucci, who was like, wow, I've never heard of anything like this before, but it was so exciting because it was so different. So he kind of worked out some of the technical aspects of the glove, how it would move, because uh, it had to be modern, but it also had to be very basic. And so then Doyle took a lot of what Carlucci was thinking about, and he started to, to piece it together himself. So he drew some sketches and made a finger sample of what part of the glove would be. And he took it to Wes, and Wes signed off on everything for this finger, except for the blade. And in the script, it really was just kind of fishing knives, um, description, very basic. But Greg Fonseca, who was also on set with the film, came in with a couple sets of knives when they had to kind of go back to the drawing board. And one of them was neither a fishing knife nor a steak knife, but it was actually a tomato knife. And it is a no longer available model called the XXP210 from WR Case and Sons Cutlery. It was the right shape, did everything they wanted, and it was stainless steel. And Wes loved it. He thought it was terrific. So they got the green light, and Doyle set Carlucci off to begin construction on uh, the drawings that he had done. And so Carlucci felt that his inexperience in building anything like this was kind of a blessing in disguise because he ended up using the methods that Freddie would have in his basement to create this glove. So it was kind of clumsy and clunky, but yet still, still sinister. You know, it wasn't too shiny. If it had been too shiny, it probably wouldn't have worked that well. It, it really had to be believable. And there, there weren't a whole lot of extra gloves made at the time as, as replicas um, because they, it took them a while to make them and it took a lot of money. So they realized that because this was basically held together by paper clips and their budget was so tight that they couldn't really spend a whole lot of extra time on building more gloves. So they only had a couple um, for some of the stunt scenes and um, things of that nature. And another fact about the glove is that the sound you hear of the screeching is a steak knife on the bottom of a metal folding chair. So if you ever want to recreate the sound, there you go. And sometimes if you wear one of the replica Freddy gloves, you can make that sound if you're scratching it on a pipe or something of that sort. And so that's the story of the glove, the iconic glove and I love it thinking back to um, how primal it is the glove itself and I love them I'm so fascinated by them they're beautiful and I'm, I'm blessed to own a replica part one I love it with all my heart
So there you go. If you guys want to learn something else about the A Nightmare on Elm Street films, let me know. And um, if you own a glove, which glove do you own and what is your fake glove? Let me know. Until next time, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. This is Deandra with Elm Street Radio, signing off.